My name is Ginger Vieira and this is Diabetes Nerd. Okay, I know we all spend so much energy trying to prevent high blood sugars, but what about your lows? We also have this constant pressure to improve our time in range. Time in range, by the way, is basically the amount of time every day that your blood sugar is between 70 to 180 milligrams per deciliter or whatever you set your personal targets to. It could be 70 to 140 if you're trying to be really tight with your management, maybe you're pregnant, or 80 to 160, it's personal. That's time in range. What about time below range? In this video, we're gonna talk about the recommended goals for time below range. We're gonna talk about the difference between mild hypoglycemia and severe hypoglycemia. And lastly, I'm gonna tell you all about an investigational therapy from Zucara Therapeutics that's actually aiming to prevent low blood sugars in people with type one diabetes. Spoiler alert, they're running a clinical trial right now and you could participate. So apparently we shouldn't be low more than 4% of the day, according to the American Diabetes Association and everybody else. Yeesh, 4%, that's a really small percentage of the day. So what counts as a low? Technically, a low blood sugar is anything below 70 milligrams per deciliter. And if you live with diabetes, you know how awful and how scary that can feel. So if I take a look at my own data, in the last 14 days, I was low 6% of the time. In the last 30 days, only 4%. But if I go to the last 90 days, I was low 6% of the time again. That's higher than that 4% goal. And I know earlier this summer when I was definitely having a hard time just focusing on diabetes management because of a lot of other stuff in my life going on, my low percentage was up to 9%. Way too many lows. Okay, but why does it matter? Are the lows really hurting me? Aren't the lows better than being high? Mm, it's not necessarily that simple. Okay, so frequent low blood sugars aren't just inconvenient. They're actually also very scary. They affect our safety. They affect our immediate health and our long-term health. But we don't hear about that as much as we hear about the long-term risks and dangers of high blood sugars. If you've ever experienced a low, you know that it leads to immediate confusion, foggy thinking, sweating and shaking, an intense urge to eat everything in the kitchen. It puts you at risk for potential accidents, especially if you are driving a car. Low blood sugars also put a lot of stress on your heart and your brain over time. Now here's one of the other biggest reasons we do not wanna have a lot of low blood sugars all the time and just, you know, write it off as, hey, that's better than being high. The more lows you're having, the more likely you will develop a condition called hypoglycemia on awareness, which basically just means that you no longer feel the warning signs and symptoms of low blood sugar. If you've developed hypoglycemia on awareness, it means you've stopped feeling the symptoms, the warning signs of lows. You've stopped feeling shaky and lightheaded and confused and sweaty. Those are all the signs and symptoms that help you catch lows sooner. Those are the warning signs. That's like the, hey, 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 we need help, we need sugar. When you stop feeling those earlier warning signs, it means your risk of experiencing a severe low becomes much higher. Okay, so let's talk about severe lows, severe hypoglycemia. Technically, the official definition of a severe hypoglycemia is when you need help from someone else to treat the low. Typically, this probably starts when you're below 50 milligrams per deciliter. Okay, what does it mean to get help from someone else? It doesn't necessarily mean someone's feeding you or giving you glucagon. It could mean that, but it could also mean that someone is encouraging you to eat. Someone is saying, hey, you look like you're not feeling okay. Do you need something? Someone is simply getting you something to eat and handing it to you. Someone could be helping you physically eat or drink. 
They could be calling 911 on your behalf. And yes, they could be giving you an injection of emergency glucagon. Yeah, severe lows are scary. Severe lows usually mean that we are having a hard time thinking straight, thinking clearly enough to move our own bodies and get ourselves the things we need in order to survive and treat the low. Severe lows also take quite a toll on your brain and your heart. We should not be dismissing severe hypoglycemia as a regular part of taking insulin. All right. Low blood sugars are no fun, mild or severe. That's why you need to know about this clinical trial happening right now. Zucara Therapeutics is recruiting participants in the US and in Canada for a clinical trial using their therapy ZT01. This is an injectable therapy designed to prevent low blood sugars in people with type 1 diabetes. And I want to clarify, this is an investigational therapy because it has not yet been approved by the FDA. Actually, it hasn't even been submitted to the FDA because their clinical trial is ongoing right now. But the results from their past clinical trial are really impressive. The therapy is working. Okay, so Zucara's therapy basically restores the communication between the cells in your pancreas and your liver, where you've got lots of glucose stored up to prevent hypoglycemia. Let me back up for a minute. Okay, so there are cells in your pancreas called beta cells. Beta cells produce insulin, but beta cells are also supposed to communicate to your alpha cells. Alpha cells produce a hormone called glucagon. Glucagon tells your liver to release stored sugar when your blood sugar is dropping. But that's not happening if you live with type 1 diabetes because your immune system destroyed your beta cells. So there are no beta cells to communicate to the alpha cells to tell the alpha cells to produce glucagon, which would then tell the liver to release stored sugar when your blood sugar is dropping. See, the whole communication is just all messed up. That's why people with type 1 diabetes have low blood sugars. And that is why Zucara's therapy aims to fix this whole mess by restoring the communication to your alpha cells so the alpha cells can produce glucagon and tell your liver when to release stored sugar. This means your alpha cells will naturally start protecting your body from low blood sugars again. This would be a major game changer for people with type 1 diabetes. Can you imagine taking a drug once a day and maybe eventually just once a week that could actually protect you from low blood sugars all day long? Zucara needs participants in this clinical trial. If you're interested in participating, check out the link dropped below in the comments or visit t1dexchange.org slash Zucara. In the meantime though, take a look at the time and range report in your CGM app. Look at the time below range. Are you having too many lows? If you're having a lot of lows, talk to your healthcare team because it sounds like you might need a little bit of help fine-tuning your insulin doses. You can also learn a whole lot about preventing low blood sugars with my books, Exercise with Type 1 Diabetes, and How to Stop Overeating During Lows. Find my books on Amazon.